We are grateful to have CPS principals and staff join us to discuss the current plans and answer your questions about the upcoming school year. So let's meet our all-star team of 46 ward principals. I'll call on each school and let the principal introduce themselves. From Brenneman. Hello, my name is Petrina Singleton. I'm the interim principal at Brenneman Elementary School this year. Super excited to be at Brenneman. This year we've just been spending a lot of time building relationships and um, with the community and with our um, families and the staff. And we are looking forward to a Back to Brenneman Bash this Saturday from 10 to 1 p.m. So if you're part of the Brenneman um, community, check out our website and get more details. We also have assistant principal post to wait. If you wanna unmute and say hi real quick, Mr. post to wait. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome back. We're hoping everybody's excited about launching school on September 8th. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. Now from Courtney. Good morning, Uptown uh, 46 Ward. This is Principal King, Macklin King, the principal of Courtney. And I have been very busy this summer collaborating with parents, staff members, and community members on uh, highly improving the remote learning um, experience for our Courtney community uh, members. We have uh, this week, following actually this meeting, we have a meet and greet with our special education team and our parents. And then next week, we are hosting a trunk party for all of our uh, families to get some of the much needed resources to make sure students have what they need um, once school launches on September 8th. So excited to be here. Thank you. And from Greeley. Hello and welcome families. I am the principal of Greeley Elementary, Raquel Gonzalez. and. Uh, my assistant principal and I, Stephanie Newmark, uh, who is new at Greeley Elementary, have been spending a lot of time preparing and organizing for the new school year, so we're, we're very excited. Uh, we have a parent packet pickup that is scheduled for September 4th and throughout the first week of school. So if you haven't received our robocalls or our remind messages, uh, please keep that in mind. And we're also uh, distributing, uh, distributing devices during September 4th as well, but those are for families who have completed the device survey um, that is on our school website that needs to be completed by uh, September 2nd. Now from McCutcheon. Hi everybody, my name's Mary Theodosopoulos. I'm the principal at McCutcheon. Um, Assistant Principal Longmire and I have been very busy collaborating um, all summer about our return to school plan and making sure that um, everything is ready for the school year. Um, next week, we will be hosting a virtual open house on Thursday um, and sending out the information to all of our families. And on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will be um, distributing the back to school kits that we have prepared for all of our students. Um, we're so happy to be here with everybody and we can't wait um, to get back to school. From Uplift Community High School. All right, <laughs> I was still muted. Hi, I'm Jennifer Y. I'm the assistant principal at Uplift. Um, this summer, we were designated as a STEAM school, an early college option as well. So students who start at Uplift beginning this school year will be eligible to earn um, significant college credit or an associate's degree by the time of graduation. So I think that that's a really great option for students. We've also been designated as a supportive school um, as far as the supports that we put in place for students and we encourage student voice. We're also a democracy school and I'm really excited with um, the direction of Uplift. I, this is my fourth year at Uplift and I think that is a great post I'm saying post-secondary because I'm used to talk, talking to my kids, but I think it's a great secondary option for students in Uptown. Thank you. And last but not least, Walt Disney. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Riskus, and I am <laughs> a proud principal at Walt Disney Magnet School. This summer and really as we're preparing for the fall, we've been working on connecting and supporting the Disney family during this time celebrating the wonderful things that our students, teachers, and families are doing, preparing for a fun and excellent academic experience. 
and we just completed our back to school meet and greet book pickup and and device pickup which which was really successful uh, so we were excited about that we have some town halls happening on Tuesday where we're going to explain remote learning to our families that's happening at 9 and 5 p.m. so Disney families see my email that just came out and we're also excited that our homeroom teachers will be putting on specific orientations for their homerooms uh, to describe everything so I'm really excited to be here excited for the year I know there's challenges but we're gonna make the best of it thank you thank you principals we are also joined by CPS Network 2 Chief Mauricio Segovia. Chief Segovia will introduce himself and then we will watch a brief video before he gives us an overview of the current plan for the first quarter of the school year. Hello everyone and thank you Alderman Kaplan for the invitation and for making this a space to, for us to be together and uh, greet uh, the community and your families from Word uh, 46. I would like to say uh, hi to the friends that I have in this uh, screen. I, it's been a while. Uh, I, I like to see and to say hi to Raquel Gonzalez and the principal from Greeley. Uh, we used to work uh, in, the, in another network some time ago. Uh, so it's good to see you uh, virtually. So hi and say hi to my uh, amazing principals from Network 2. Uh, Mary, uh, Marcolin, um, Patrina, Paul, and Assistant Principal Postaway. And I could, uh, nice to see you, uh, Jennifer, again. Um, so again, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity, uh, Alderman Kaplan. So CPS, as you all know, you hear from our amazing principals in Uptown, uh, is planning to open the school year remotely um, for the first quarter. So that, that is the hope that we will be able to transition into a hybrid model uh, as soon as we can. For now, we are planning to uh, continue remote learning through quarter one, meaning November, se November uh, 7. Um, so as we are getting ready to um, prepare for the um, opening of the school, I would like to um, share this video with you that uh, the Alderman has ready where it shows in two and a half minutes um, a summary of what we're planning to do and welcoming everybody back to our school year uh, in September 8th. So let's, uh, let's uh, be ready to watch this short video. As we prepare to start the school year learning from home, CPS is taking steps to ensure students will continue to have high quality learning experiences through remote learning. We're implementing feedback from families, staff, educators, and community members to improve at-home learning and meet the needs of our school communities. New expectations for schools and educators will help develop daily routines similar to those followed during at-school learning. And students can expect improved virtual daily instruction that is engaging and responsive to their social emotional needs, daily attendance expectations, and a return to regular grading practices. The district is working to ensure all students have access to computing devices and reliable high-speed internet so they're able to engage with their teachers and classmates. We took the lessons we learned during remote learning in the spring to make improvements to the at-home learning experience. First, students and teachers will all use Google Education Suite, which includes Classroom, Meets, and Docs. Students and teachers will be engaged for the entirety of a typical school day through a combination of live, real-time instruction with classmates and teachers, small group activities, and independent learning. And at-home learning will be aligned to grade level standards and designed to meet students' unique needs. Our goal is to make learning at home as close to a normal school experience as possible. For example, a pre-K student could start their day by meeting with their classmates and teacher through a real-time virtual classroom activity. During the day, they would be able to participate in real-time instruction in a smaller group session. We will also provide families with self-directed activities so they can help their child with skills lessons and gross motor practice exercises. An elementary school student's at-home learning day would mirror a typical day at school. Their daily schedule, including electives, core academic subjects, and special classes such as arts and physical education, would include a mix of live instruction with their teacher and classmates, self-directed learning, 
and independent time for lunch and short breaks. High school students will follow a traditional high school schedule with access to their school's full course offerings. They will attend virtual classes, have time for lunch and to transition between classes, and their days will be filled with a balance of live instruction, group activities, and self-directed learning. While detailed schedules will come from your child's school directly, this is what we expect a typical day to look like for pre-K, elementary, and high school students. As we approach the start of the school year, we're going to continue to listen to the guidance of city and health officials and gather feedback from our students, families, and educators. We are committed to ensuring students will have access to high quality instruction even during these unprecedented circumstances. And we are looking forward to starting the school year as strong as possible. To learn more about fall remote learning, visit cps.edu forward slash reopening 2020. Thank you so much, Chief Segovia. I will now share the questions that our town hall attendees have submitted um, from someone in the Courtney community. Um, my student will leave his classroom to join other students for certain classes, including math. Will he still be guaranteed those class sessions during remote learning? Yes, and a lot of the feedback that I received from the community meetings that I've conducted over the past month, um, we're balancing those transitions from one class to the next, math, science, social studies, with the, I don't know the grade level, but developmentally appropriate um, screen time. So we're considering screen fatigue, as well as the ease of transitioning to and from a class. So yes, all class offerings will be made available to all um, to all students, and we're upgrading uh, upgrading our website so that parents can see the schedule and have all of the um, the links that the students would need to transition from one class to the next. Thank you. Uh, I understand Chief Segovia has still has a more of a wider overview he'd like to uh, provide to us. So, Chief, take it away. We can't hear you, Chief. What about now? <laughs> yes, perfect. I thought you were able to read lips, so I was trying to test your ability. And <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you, uh, Alderman Kepperman. Um, what I was saying that uh, families will be receiving uh, the schedule for each of their student um, before September 8th. Um, through the school uh, administration. So we are working on it. Uh, the, the principals in this panel are all working and developing their uh, school schedules and the classrooms schedules because the schedules are going to look quite different this year. Since every student, all students are going to engage in learning through Google Classrooms. So every student will receive their, schedule, their, their daily schedule for the different Google Classrooms that they will need to navigate through, through the day. So this is something we're working right now and principals are getting that information to share with families. And as uh, Principal King stated, they are going to be working on updating their school websites. We have already email a distribution list. So they will be receiving, families will be receiving student schedules via email, uh, via school website. Uh, and different means of uh, communications. So we, that's the plan for now. Uh, work on schedule so everybody know where to go on day one at, uh, as we open the school year. Thank you, thank you. Is there anything else? Shall I go on to the next question? I'll do that. Uh, this is from someone in the Brenneman community. Who will be informing families about updates and changes? And how can we stay informed? Does social distancing mean parents can't receive in-person support with technology training? Awesome, thanks for the question. So we have a, a few different ways that we're trying to engage with families. Um, one, we have a weekly newsletter that goes out and we have a lot of information 
in there. Uh, we also have our website. We also have staff members making phone calls every single day now. We're paying staff members to come in uh, before they actually start work next week to, to call our families. Um, so we have phone calls, emails, newsletters, the website. Um, so we're trying to keep our families engaged as much as possible. Uh, we are also adopting an app called School Connect which will allow us to um, provide a text blast because a lot of our parents may not check email daily. They may check it once a week or twice a week, but the text blast will get that information to them more quickly. So we are looking at all of those means of communication. We also um, will have a back to Brenneman bash on Saturday where we will provide tech distribution. We'll give a school t-shirt, popsicle from the principal, school supplies. It's going to be a really exciting time and we will ensure social distancing. We have a lot of staff there to help kind of keep count of how many people are in the a specific area. Um, we also, as um, Paul mentioned, we're doing orientations for parents as well um, to describe the schedules and to describe how they can get devices and how they can get that tech support. CPS also has provided some technology training for families as well, and we did communicate that in our newsletter, but we will be looking um, to take needs assessments of our parents that need additional tech support as well and providing that from our school, but then also connecting them with CPS um, resources. But a lot of different means of communication and we are here to, help, here to help if they need. One more thing, next week we also are gonna have device and materials pick up, and so parents can get support during that time as well. So. Parents may come to pick up novels, workbooks, technology, as the teachers um, organize them, have them laid out. We'll have a social a process for socially distancing for them to get those materials as well. Next week, probably Thursday and Friday, we'll be sending that communication out through a newsletter and phone calls as well. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is from someone in the Uplift community. How will PACs be, a, be allowed to spend their funds Will parents be given an easy to read list? So, yes, yes. So we um, definitely, we could work on having an easy to read list so parents will know what's allowable and what's not allowable. We're definitely encouraging um, the pack to spend the money. Unfortunately, the last couple of years, we got the money back. so it didn't serve its function. So we want um, parents to really um, be thinking about um, how we can use those funds for parent education, especially in the remote setting where parents are probably leveraging this education more than ever. And so thinking about like bringing in speakers or productivity tools, um, if people need hotspots, if we can link people in on Remind, something of that sort. So definitely um, encouraging um, more feedback in someone reaching out. Is it, is it possible, Alderman Kaplan, for um, whomever, for them to reach out to me? And I don't have a problem with us like coming up together, like just really um, digging into it and then we can kind of problem solve together and make sure that people are clear on what we can do with the funds and get it spent for real this year. Great. Love it. Um, so this is from someone in the McCutcheon community. When will we have a concrete learning schedule? Hi, all right. So the teachers received the learning schedules on Tuesday and parents will be receiving their schedules in their back to school kits um, when the designated grade levels pick up next Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. And teachers will also be emailing families with the schedules as, long, as well as the Google Classroom codes and logins. And that information will also be available during the virtual open house next Thursday. Thank you. This is from someone in the Disney community. What is the plan to reopen? And is there a chance that CPS will open sooner than the second quarter? Right now, we, the district has made a decision that we are opening November 6th. That would be the soonest that we would open. Um, you know, and that decision was made to protect the safety, to ensure the safety of all students, teachers, and the city of Chicago. So I know that we are going to closely monitor the situation with the COVID-19 crisis and, and pandemic. And you know, we all want to come back to school. Uh, I, I think we can 
everyone on this call can say that we miss our students, we miss our, miss our families. So we're, we're really excited to, to come back. And as soon as it is safe to come back, we will. Uh, we promise to be fully ready, you know, following all protocols, making sure that safety comes first. You know, right now we're, we're really focusing on remote learning and we're promising a plan that is not only more improved from this, not only improved from the spring, but also something that's really engaging and, and, and productive. Um, and as we plan for that, we're also thinking about reopening when we can. Uh, so all I can say is that we're going to monitor the situation closely. And when we do come back, uh, we will be ready to come back and we'll make sure that safety comes first. Thank you. Now we have two grade schools that are very close to two different family uh, shelters, uh, both McCutcheon and Courtney. So this is from someone in the McCutcheon community, but I would imagine uh, Principal King could also speak to this as well, uh, the Courtney community. And the question is, how will students experiencing homelessness be supported? So uh, great question. Um, our STLS liaisons um, will be working very closely with the families to ensure that all of their needs are being met. Likewise, um, Assistant Principal Longmire and I have been collaborating all summer um, with the shelter that's in our attendance area. Um, our attendance team will be focusing on attendance, not only to make sure, again, that the students are supportive, but uh, supported, but to uh, it, offer incentives and help. Um, we will be reaching out multiple times per week. Our, our teachers will be reaching out multiple times per week. Um, and our STLS liaisons will also be reaching out a minimum of a one time per week. Um, we will ensure that all of our STLS families have technology and that's something that we have already been collaborating with um, at the Salvation Army Shelter in particular. Um, and um, Again, we have been actually talking to a lot of our families over the summer that may have transitioned to different housing to ensure that they're able to get online and that they have all the resources that they need. So um, we will definitely be providing support in multiple modes. Um, and our behavioral health team also has a, an amazing um, plethora of resources that will be meeting the social emotional needs of our families. Also, um, as Petrina mentioned uh, earlier, Principal Singleton, that CPS offered two sessions for tech support, which was um, also shared with the families, but I was able to collaborate with another school um, through our community school partnership, and uh, parents were also given a technology a resource, um, dr Google drop-in, Google Hangout drop-ins, um, for tech support all next week and the first week of school. Um, alongside, we have the learning kits uh, th that we're gonna be distributing next week. Um, so we have many, many ways that we're supporting our STLS students as well as all of our students. Anything else to add, Principal King? Yeah so, yeah, so we um, at Courtney, we have been following our students, tracking them since uh, March, actually, when the pandemic hit um, to kind of spread out the density. Our students have been placed kind of, you know, all over the city. So our BHT has tracked our parents, those that we can, that we could actually find. And what we did is we would just check in. What do you need? What do you need? So we've been kind of troubleshooting along the way. Um, in addition to um, having uh, the manager of Cornerstone attends our weekly meetings. And so following the weekly meetings, we follow up and we've identified what those unique needs are. So um, I'll be emailing the chief to see if we can have some desks sent over uh, to set up some, um, some cohorts for the students. Um, but we've really tried to keep in touch with parents because there are the parents that um, need support that reside at Cornerstone, but also doubled up. So all of them have unique needs. And so by reaching out via the phone and calling in and just checking in over the summer, it has allowed us to kind of personalize some of those supports they need. So working closely with Cornerstone, we send out emails, we send out text messages, the personalized phone calls parents have really liked. Um, those things have been really helpful. 
So it looks a little different based on what your exact situation is. Thank you. And actually, uh, both of you have reached out to me to also assist in any way I can. Sometimes we can get additional services from the city to help out. Uh, so that's great. Uh, this is- I would like to add, yeah, yeah, just one thing I would like to add. In, in the event we have new families that are uh, identified as family in temporary living situation, homeless families, and they are within the attendance area of any of these schools, we are uh, if, you know, uh, sharing the information with all these families if they need any type of support in regards to device, connectivity, access to internet, so their children can be connected on day one. They can just reach out to the principals and we will ensure that these families will get the device, computers they need, and the connectivity they need as well so the kids can be uh, in attendance on, day, uh, on September 8th. So again, if you can help us with that information, um, Alderman, that will be great. Absolutely. Great, great idea. Um, this is from someone in the Uplift community. Will community centers such as the Boys and Girls Club be available to assist working families who can't stay home? What other supports are in place for parents who have to work outside of the home? Yeah, so that's... A Big question, even in my own house. Um, so different organizations are doing different things. Um, I had been in contact with um, someone at the park district in my own area. And I know that they were waiting on some guidance from CPS. So I'm thinking that a lot of things have been up in the air as far as um, with the, what was being provided for families who couldn't stay home. I know C as a CPS parent, I received a survey. So I think what's happening is CPS is going to share certain information with these organizations. And I think a plan is going to be put together from there. Right now, I haven't heard much, but I plan on um, creating resources. So in our um, newsletters, if it's an uplift family, if it's a parent, making sure that and I'm going to put my email in the um, chat so you can see send me an email to make sure you are on the mailing list. What I do, we have community in schools. We have resources for families. Um, that is one of the things that I'm going to be pushing to make sure um, families have access to. We have access to housing, all kinds of things to make sure that people are able to see, um, people are able to get their needs met um, and for us to help bridge the gap. So making sure that you're checking the website of those individual organizations because you might find out before me if you do find out please share it with me and i will put my email in the chat and then that way um i can make sure that you have access to the newsletter so anything that we're up to date with we can make sure that we share it with the families because right now i don't have that answer but check the websites of the um Boys and Girls Club, I'll reach out for my end and whoever finds out first, we'll make sure that we support all families with getting that resource. Thank you. And you can also contact um, the 46th Ward. Uh, we have some resources that we know about that can help you too. So uh, please, there's all kinds of ways to, to reach out. Uh, to get a hold of my website, just Google James46. It takes you straight to james46ward.org. Uh, and we can also help. Here's another question. This is from someone in the McCutcheon and Disney uh, communities. How will we ensure students with IEPs, especially very young students, receive the services they need? So um, particularly students with IEPs um, prior to um, the beginning of the school year, all had a, a remote learning plan completed um, with their IEP. So students with IEPs will be following their remote learning plan and they will be receiving services, um, direct services um, as via synchronous or asynchronous learning consistent with the remote learning plan. Um, the special ed teachers along with their service providers will work together with their teachers 
um, parents or other individuals to ensure that strategies are addressed that can improve um, communication and uh, many interventions will be implemented in a directly in a synchronous manner. So um, the schedules are very much aligned to the IEP minutes required and student, the teachers will be either pushing in to those classroom sessions or pulling out a group of students as dictated um, per their IEP. And in pre-K, it's going to look um, the same. The, the structure is the same um, for pre-K as well. Um, every student who is supported by the IEP's remote learning plan outlines uh, how the services will be supported during remote learning. Um, all of those should have been attached to their IEPs. And um, again, the supplemental services and the service providers will also be remote. Um, and that's that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it. It's going to be almost as consistent as possible with you know being being in school. Paul, I'll echo everything that Mary said, uh, which was really well said. And, and I'll and I'll add this as well. Our diverse learners are doing wonderful things at Disney, and one thing that we're really focusing on is celebrating their greatness through social media, through mass emails, just showcasing the wonderful learning that's going on, you know, and their unique talents. So that's one thing that we really want to focus on. Another thing I'll add is focusing on social and emotional learning, creating clear plans with our counselors and our social workers uh, to support our diverse learners and the rest of our student population as well. Uh, so that's a, a, a direct focus. You know, another thing is making sure that our teachers are fluent with the individual education plan, the IEP, of, of all of our diverse learners and making sure that they understand the accommodations and the modifications that need to be made. We always want to do that, but especially during remote learning. You know, that's, that's really important and a focus at Disney. And we're going to be providing professional development to our teachers on the best ways to support our diverse learners in meeting their IEP, their individual education plan, in celebrating them, and also working with their families um, and, and, and teachers to do that. You know, we have an inclusion model and a resource model, and we're going to make sure that those models are, um, are, are completely met. And just like Mary said, every student has a weekly learning plan that will reflect their IEP accommodations and modifications, and we're going to ensure that our staff follows through with those. Thank you. Can I ask uh, the um, Alderman Kaplan? Yes. For all Courtney parents that are on the line, my 6 p.m. community chat is all about special education. So hop off of this call and jump on the 6 p.m. and it's all about special education and our team will be there to meet and greet our families to answer any special education questions they may have. Great, great. Uh, so this is from someone in the McCutcheon community, but this applies to all of our uh, preschool classrooms what will be the expectations for pre-k students i was talking on mute i'm so sorry so our half day pre-k and our full day pre-k have a certain amount of required minutes just as all the other grade levels so for um, language arts in the half day pre-k it's um, 60 minutes of synchronous teaching which is a direct live teaching and 60 minutes of asynchronous um, teaching which could be um, a recorded read aloud or a small group lesson or an intervention um, or some kind of project, activity, um, something that's in, engaging. Um, and then math has a total of 30 minutes of asynchronous um, uh, activities. So a sample of what a pre-K, um, half day pre-K would look like would be maybe from 8.45 to 9, um, a social emotional activity, morning meeting, a morning song, morning circle, and then break out into groups um, for language arts where there will be some live teaching and uh, different, different groups. Then they would have lunch and then transition to math and dismissal. The full day pre-K um, also has um, a certain, 
that type of setup, um, except that the full day pre-K will have a longer set of office hours where teachers can confer with parents and also students um, and uh, um, time built in for MTSS tier two and tier three interventions um, and then the live teaching as well. Um, I know that the goal of the pre-K is to ensure that the lessons are engaging and um, that this, the work that's being done is not busy work, but it's actual, um, it's work that's going to be beneficial to the students, but also fun and um, aligned to the standards um, because pre-K students do need the opportunity to interact with with people and the world around them. So um, this has to be taken into account in our teacher's lesson plans. Um, and the, um, the teaching strategies gold is the, what we follow so that it is going to be aligned with that in the cur creative curriculum. Um, and weekly lesson plans will be sent to the parents um, and parents will definitely be engaged um, in the pre-K process. I know that it could be overwhelming, um, especially for the little ones, because they're going to have to learn how to navigate um, the, the computers if they don't already know. Um, so also, of course, parents, please make sure that if you need help navigating, that you really take advantage of the tech sessions that are available. Thank you. Any other schools? Additional comments from the principals? I think she, what she said was very well said. I mean, she, she laid it out exactly <laughs> the same. Our schedule is very similar. We have our schedule mapped out. Um, one thing we have thought about is essentials, which are like the arts and the music and things like that. What will that look like for pre-K? So we are still planning to offer that to our pre-K students, um, but we've been going back and forth uh, with, will that be too much screen time or not? So we are gonna offer art and music uh, and PE, but it may, we may just let parents know it's an optional piece uh, if it's too much screen time for students, but we wanna make sure they have access to the arts and that physical activity and things like that. We've also made sure our schedule is, um, our lunch schedule is the same for all of our students too. So if they have older siblings, and I think other schools have done that as well. So lunchtime is the same across the board at our school um, so they can have that community family time for lunch and and keep a consistent schedule. But Miss um, Mary, Miss um, Theo, she laid it out there very clearly. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to, to add as well. Um, thank you, Mary. That was, um, you said it all. <laughs> uh, but that Greeley as well is doing, do, is doing the same. I mean, we have our lunch set up uh, so that all of our students have lunch at the same time because uh, we understand that some of our older siblings might be taking care of some of our younger ones in situations. And so um, everybody will be having their lunch time at the same time. Um, and, you know, part of the school day uh, for our pre-K students is that important gross motor. And so our, our teachers are incorporating um, activities that will, will help um, with that as well. Great. So we will now take questions from our attendees. Uh, a reminder to please click the Q&A box to type your question in school for the panelists. And I'll read the question uh, and the school if it's listed and panelists can jump in. So uh, I would assume that there might be some students in cluster programs who might require paper versions of modified work those students may not be able to access the computer. Is there a plan? Well, I can speak. I don't have, I have high school cluster kids, but we had, um, we had a um, ESY this summer. And so we did have families who weren't able to access the technology and so we actually printed out paper packets for them. At one point, I delivered pa paper packets. Um, we had teachers who were gracious enough to deliver them to families and then families were able to pick them up from the school as well. So we are willing to do whatever we can to remove barriers to our cluster students getting the paper um, 
resources for their education? So this is Macklin and Courtney. Um, it may not just be the written. For us, we have students that it may be, um, they may not, they may be, you know, may not have verbal, uh, be able to vocalize. So we've thought about all of the different disabilities that our students have and how do we um, have them demonstrate or communicate learning to us. So we're very intentional when we drop off, when we drop off packets into the trunks of those trunk at the trunk party, our teachers have thought through what that work will look like. What is it that um, the students will need to be able to demonstrate learning, whether it's a packet, whether it's a tool that we need for them um, to be able to write on the screen. I think like Jamboard, I think it's interactive. So we've looked at all, looked at our students individually and what their needs are and how can we have them demonstrate learning um, towards mastery of a skill. So we're being very strategic with the materials that we put into the, the boxes that the students will receive. So there'll be some traditional school supplies, but for our cluster students, um, it's, a, it's a lot more specialized. It's just not a pen and a piece of paper. So it may be paper for one student, but it may be uh, an assistive uh, technology device for another. Okay. What Principal White said really spoke to me, having a whatever it takes mentality. And I could, I think I could speak for everyone on this group and I've just seen all the principals in action. And I really feel like we're willing to do whatever it takes so if you have any concerns on, on, on any work, just please reach out to us so we can support you. Thank and I'd like to add as well that uh, it, it is an option for families to uh, request additional support to help the kids learn at home. So the paper package is also available uh, in addition to the, uh, the, the virtual learning. So there are families who are taking advantage also as um, asking school for additional uh, learning opportunities or activities for the student. Um, so please know that the district will be generating a uh, hard copy and the school will have available these hard copy packages that will be renewed every other week. So every two weeks, the school will have access to new packages for a student uh, to have as, as an option for learning. Thank you. Uh, this is from someone in the McCutcheon community, uh, but this also applies to all our schools. Is McCutcheon planning on hiring additional staff this year? And will additional staff be hired to accommodate for remote learning needs? Um. Do you mean additional staff to support remote learning? No additional staff was hired to support remote learning. The staff that was hired um, is, um, we did get three new positions um, because we received the STEAM designation, just like Uplift, shout out to Uplift, woo -hoo. Um, So we are receiving three positions um, and we're in the hiring process for that, but that's to support STEAM. And then of course our students, um, we uh, hired a new math, uh, excuse me, middle school science teacher. Um, we have a new middle school uh, special ed teacher, um, and we are in the process of hiring a new case manager. But those positions, again, were positions that were vacant, where people made transitions. Um, there hasn't been additional staff that um, has been acquired specifically for remote learning. Thank you. Uh, this is from someone in the Greeley community. What is the best way for parents to connect with principals and teachers while we are all working remotely? Good question. Um, it is a very difficult time um, at, at the moment. And uh, the best way uh, to communicate now, I mean, I, I have parents who communicate through her mind, <laughs> uh, through my phone. And so I'm, uh, receive, I receive phone calls and text messages throughout the day through Remind. Um, so that's one way, uh, through my personal phone. Um, uh, another way um, is to uh, my email um, right now. Um, at the moment, um, our, our clerks have just started working. Um, so their hours are now um, steady. 
Um, so if you um, call the main office and um, if by chance a clerk does not um, answer, you can leave a message, but you can definitely um, email uh, Ms. Newmark, which is our new assistant principal or myself, and we will be, um, we answer emails daily. Uh, so that's the best way at the moment. Uh, once school starts and once you are um, aware of who your child's teacher, who your child teacher is, um, then you can begin. That's another source of communication as well. You can email your child's teacher. And then we have, uh, of course, our, our, um, our team of uh, social worker, our counselors who are um, also available um, to support as well. Thank you. This is for Chief Segovia. I saw that CPS has a survey about childcare during school hours. How is COVID safety being ensured? Is this being treated differently than an in-school classroom? Yeah, uh, the district released this survey just to assess the need uh, in the community, um, knowing that every student in Chicago Public School will be engaging learning through remote uh, learning now, right? Virtually from home. It's learning at home. Um, and just by paying attention to a numbers of uh, requests from uh, essential workers across the city, so the, the, the district decided to create an, a survey and just send to everybody in the city. So the logistic and what's going to happen right after getting the information uh, from the survey is something that is being in, in, in preparation now. So we do not have a plan how this uh, service is going to look like um, yet. Uh, definitely, we need to continue looking at the uh, information that we're getting from uh, the health public experts uh, in these regards um, and to ensure that the, all the security uh, measures that are needed to keep kids in uh, school buildings are going to be uh, followed. Um, at, as of now, there is no a clear plan in how we are going to support families that are going to be um, stating that they need support with childcare. Uh, but we need that information to make the assessment. So I would like to advise everybody in this call, if you are uh, in that situation that you need child care support, please complete the survey and let us know. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, from someone in the Greeley and Disney uh, communities. How will children with one-on-one -on -one IEPs be supported in one-on-one -on -one learning while remote? I'll go ahead then and answer that. So when we meet on Google Meets, there, you know, there's a couple of features. One, one feature is that the students meet with, with an entire classroom. And then you can also set up separate links where there, there's more one-on-one -on -one learning uh, in smaller groups. So one thing that we're doing at Disney is we're making sure that every student is part of the whole group, but we're also providing uh, pullout services in, in our resource model where students can work together in a smaller group with direct attention from their diverse learner teacher. And that way they're able to experience the, the whole group, but they're also able to have their accommodations met that's in their individual education plan when they meet in the smaller group. So just like in the normal day where students would meet in a smaller group would get pulled out of the classroom, we can do that uh, virtually as well. And that's something that we're really working on with our teachers next week during our professional development week to really support them with that process of giving individual attention virtually. Yes, um, same um, as Paul had said, Greeley is, is following the same. Um, so our special education teachers will be co-teaching with their classroom teachers and, and following along. And so um, in uh, the inclusion settings, um, the, um, the special education teacher will be working collaboratively um, and meeting with the classroom, with the classroom teacher um, on the Google Meets, um, helping the students as a whole group, as Paul had mentioned. And then um, 
when necessary as, as the minutes um, are written in the child's IEP, then they will move into separate uh, groups. And then that's when the, the uh, special education teacher will then meet in the smaller groups with those stu students to meet their specific minutes in their content area. I'd like to add to that too. Um, this came up, this question was very popular. Um, I receive it almost every week during the community meetings. And I think that um, when parents ask that question, um, it's not always that there has to be a pullout. It depends on what that SICA is assigned to the child for. So if it's something to keep the child on task, the child doesn't necessarily, in some instances, they may need small group, but it may be um, just monitoring the engagement of students and how are they responding to questions and supporting in real time within the, the general Google Classroom. So for parents that have that concern, make sure you familiarize yourself with what the, the, why the SICA is assigned to that child in one-on-one -on -one, and make sure you work with, because you are, you're always a part of the IEP team, but now you're really on the team and we're going to need you to communicate with us to see if the strategies that we're using in real time in your home is actually working. So um, we will definitely need to co co constantly communicate with the parents to improve and refine that, that support, that one-on-one -on -one support. Thank you. Uh, this is from someone in the Uplift uh, community and it's a, it's a good question because I understand that there are some students who have part-time jobs to help support their families. So the question is, how will attendance affect the student's grades? What if a child is not able to be available every day due to their family's situation? Oh, so I want to remind everybody that this is school. So I'm gonna give the same answer that I would give with school because this is different from um, what happened um, last quarter. So um, students are expected to be at school the entire day and they're following their schedule. Attendance will be taken every period. Um, just like in the case with school, um, in-person school, if there are um, issues that arise as far as a student's attendance, we would create tiered support, right? So we're like, we would not just jump to failing a child because they're not coming to school. We would first try to figure out what is the reason why the student is not engaged and try to provide supports. So if it's an issue of a student working a job because I'm trying to help put food on my table because my mom lost her job due to COVID closure. So that's a real issue. So we would work to provide resources and supports. We um, were able to get um, families um, monetary support um, through our network and just through other resources over the um, closure last semester and so we would work to do that we do not want is i mean there are things that are beyond our control but try to close the gap as much as possible to keep the students engaged going to class every day every period and i don't want i don't want kids to think that it's optional because we had a lot of kids who had to do uh, now that uplift we did it pretty well as far as engagement at uplift but in the but in as a as a network as a district um, our, our high school students had to do a lot of credit recovery. And so what we don't want is for students to miss credits because unlike elementary school, if those kids miss those credits, they won't be able to graduate from high school and they'll be at a huge deficit when it comes to recovering those credits and doing credits um, moving forward. I'd like to add to that as well. Um, we at and I, if I may, I like to speak for all the principals on the panel as well. Um, you know, you said this is school. That's been my motto this whole summer. <laughs> this is school. Um, and I've been saying that during our community meetings um, to emphasize the importance of, although this is different, this is, this is school. And, um, but at the same time, we're here to support families. Um, but we need to know where we where that support is needed. And so when we don't have that connection with you when uh, we're trying to reach out, um, it's important to be able to reach out to us so that we know what you need. And, and um, so it, it, it's very difficult. We've, we have 431 students uh, at present.
family at, at Greeley and, and all the other principals here have, I'm sure, um, if not more students. And so it's very difficult to be able to track every student as, as and we're working very hard to do that throughout the year. However, if there's something happening at home um, where attendance is difficult or uh, whatever situation may come up, illness, uh, job loss, whatever that may be, reaching out to us first before us having to see a uh, tardiness or, or an attendance issue is very helpful to us and very helpful to your family so that we can catch it right away and be able to provide those supports immediately so that your child is not falling behind. And so um, having that open communication and reaching out to us first when things happen is greatly appreciated so that we don't wait and see things decline uh, before things actually, we can do something about it. So trying to be proactive um, I think is more helpful than trying to wait and see. And so uh, we're, I'm urging, and we are all urging families to be really open uh, with your lines of communication and uh, to reach out to us and be proactive uh, with your needs because we have resources between all of us. We have lots of resources. Thank, Thank you, Raquel, you. for your help on that. Yes, absolutely. And our office is glad to help as well. Uh, this question is for Chief Segovia. Some parents are not eligible for the internet that's being offered. What do they do if they don't have internet? What are their options? So um, th there is different levels of eligibility at this point, right? The district is going through um, eligibility, identify the high needs families first. And there is some specific criteria that were established to identify the eligibility. Once that first eligibility round is completed, the district will go around for a second round of eligibility. And the families that are in this call that need, or any other family that you might know that need uh, connectivity, I am encouraging them to reach out to the school directly. Call your principals, let them know your needs. Uh, the same thing with devices. If the device is, is all obsolete, broken, damaged, if not working, let your principal know that you need a replacement. Uh, we are working really diligently at this time to identify that need to replace devices that might not be working for a student. And in, in regards to connectivity, we need to know as well. So if you are not in a list of uh, eligibility at this point, let your principal know help the, the principal with this information, the principal will be reaching out to me. And we will escalate this to central office. Uh, central office is in the process of uh, developing new partnership with philanthropists around the, the state, and they are providing some support on this as well. So we, we have hope that we will have new resources to support families in this need, but we need to know. So please help us to know of your needs, as Principal Gonzalez was saying, help us to know of your needs and help us to help you as well. Um, so it's a flow of communication that is very needed at this time. And please know that, uh, you know, establishing a mindset that the school is important, even if it's not in person, is something that is key at this time. Uh, and I would like to ask parents to not believe that what we experience in this springtime is going to be the same thing that we are going to offer as we open the school during this fall. It's going to be very different. We have learned a lesson. Uh, we have a lot of challenges because we have to close our school uh, and, and start rushing through um, figuring out how can we teach remotely. We have learned in numbers of lessons. And we have improved a lot of the practices that we try to do in, in, during the springtime. Uh, so please know that now the school day is going to be a regular day. Teachers are expected to work the regular schedule, regular days, and the principals will have access to visit virtually all the classrooms now. Uh, so that is something that is new. So we have access now to see how teachers are engaging our students in daily learning, 
something that we didn't have before. Uh, and helping teachers to improve their practices as well. So there's a lot of new resources that we're using to support the learning because this is something that we all need to learn how to do better. Helping teachers how to do better in remote teaching, right? And help a school how to do better in remote services to the community. And as all, the district is improving also this practice and how to improve our services for our district. So uh, please help your principal to know of your needs and they will share that information with us. Thank you. Our last question is from someone in the Greeley community. Will parent mentors be working with teachers during this time? Yes, so um, I've been in conversation um, with Nellie and One Northside, um, and we are trying to find a way to uh, incorporate our parent mentor program into the remote learning. Um, so we're working on it. Uh, we don't know exactly what the privacy um, situation would be like with, with the parents and, and, uh, and such. So we are definitely working on it to, to make that happen. So um, more will be forthcoming. Again, this is for teachers who voluntary volunteer to have the parent mentor program um, in in their classrooms and um, so we will be having more information later on but yes I I'm in conversation and we're trying to find ways again to best support students in the classroom using uh, the parent mentor program thank you uh, thank you to our attendees for all of your questions but before we wrap up I want to open the floor to our panelists to see if anyone has any final comments. I just like to say um, thank you to everyone. And um, I'm glad that people were able to come on tonight and to listen. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to be here with these panelists. Uh, they're wonderful people. And we're all here um, to support one another. And I'm glad to have them as, as supports uh, standing next to me to help make this situation the best um, possible. And so I, I thank all of you who are attending tonight. And I thank the panelists who are here. I'm, I'm proud to be here uh, with you tonight and speaking um, to our families. I'll also just say um, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity, Alderman Kappelman. Excited to be a part of your ward and a part of Uptown and a part of Network 2. So just want to say thank you again. I love these principals on the call too. We'll continue to collaborate. Um, on our last Network 2 um, meeting with Chief Segovia, he asked us to talk about our theme, our motto for the year. And so I just want to leave with this, that our motto is um, be the change, Brenneman, be the change. And so I just believe with all of us working collectively together, we will have a great year. We will make it a great year. Mr. Se Chief Segovia always says, make it a great day. We will make it a great year um, with our um, students and our families, with all of us working together, we can be that positive change. So super excited about the school year. Thank you. I just wanted to say to all families that we know how challenging things are now and how much stress there is. And just know you can count on us to be there for you. I know everyone on this panel, I, I, I'm lucky and humbled to have got, gotten to know these leaders here and we're, you know, we're here for you and, and we're, we're gonna do whatever we can to, to make this challenging situation as best as it can be. I echo everyone's sentiments. These are wonderful um, principals. We have a wonderful neighborhood um, and a wonderful chief that always supports us and checks in on us to make sure that we're doing okay um, and to make sure that we're able to support our families. He's always answering our calls and making sure that um, our schools are getting what they need. So thank you to all the families that attended and submitted questions and um, please continue to email me. Um, so many families have been emailing me and contacting us. So please continue that and we will support each other and we will get through this. I echo what everyone else said. Um, I'm not in network too, but I'm feeling very jealous right now from working with the um, principals in Uptown. They are just awesome. 
Uh, Mr. Kappelman, the alderman is awesome. He's so supportive, so uh, uplift as a school. And I am just really um, glad to be here and glad to support parents who take the initiative to come in and really ask those tough questions and support their students. I'm just honored to be here to serve. And I would like to also add that if parents need support in navigating the Google platform that we are going to use to engage students in learning, please reach out to the school. Uh, there is support. There is learning opportunities. We understand that the, now the, we are asking parents to do so much for their children, right? And we are hoping that they are going to be the leverage we need to move this district uh, in the pathway that we have established already with our vision, right? Uh, so please, if you need help in navigating Google and how is this working, right? The Google platform, reach out to your principals and make sure, and I, I am assure you that the principal will figure out how to help you. We're putting together some training sessions for parents as well in every school. So please uh, just reach out to your principals and I know they will be able to uh, support you with this as well. So thank you so much uh, everybody for being here tonight and thank you uh, Alderman Kaplan for making this space possible to share this with, with the community. Thank you, thank you all so much for coming and thank you to our wonderful panelists for sharing such valuable information with our community. I will continue to share information as it becomes available. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me and my staff if we can be of any further assistance uh, for you. So stay safe, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. <laughs>